Every potential solar project has its own challenges in terms of location, roof type, and customer requests. Today in the pitch, Steve Muma, Director of Sales with SunMoto, walks us through a couple different approaches to mounting residential solar to illustrate how selecting the right system can improve the installation efficiency and expand the number of projects you can take on overall. Well, hey, thanks for uh, taking the time today, Steve. It's great to be here. I appreciate having the chance to talk with you. So Steve, let's start with the old tried and true, the rail-based racking uh, system. This is still pretty much the preferred method for many, but it's been around you know, for a couple of decades now. Uh, is there anything new? I was really pleasantly excited uh, you know, when I started with Sunmoto and we started working on our product and the roadmap to see just how much opportunity there was for innovation with railed systems. We feel like we've, we've really pushed the envelope. We have two main things um, for, for flush mount rail systems that we're very excited about. The first is our SMR rail system. Uh, it's a completely new rail product from Sunmoto with new rail, new clamps, new splice, new everything. Most of the cost of a rail system is in the rail itself. And we found that we were able to really optimize the design of that rail. Almost everybody that touches the SMR for the first time and picks up a rail, their first response is, wow, this is the lightest thing I've ever felt. What that means is it's also very competitively priced because the lighter it is, the less materials in it, the less materials in it, the less it costs. Compared to like, you know, the other leading rail brands, we're probably about 20% lighter weight. At the same time, we were able to achieve that lightest rail on the market. We were also able to achieve some of the strongest rail on the market, basically just through optimizing how we're using that material. We're not using material in ways that doesn't add strength. There's certain features you can have in a rail like channels and slots that don't really make the rail stronger and actually make it weaker. And we've done our best to avoid having any of that. So then in addition to the rail itself, we've also taken a different look at how we do the clamps and the splices. Most solar clamps on the market are still using T-bolts. And the SMR system, we instead went to a simple pop-on clamp. So very easy, just pops onto the rail. Once it's on there, it stands up nice and, and, and firmly so you can slide it around and adjust it on the rail. You don't have to worry about the clamps kind of falling off of the rail. And additionally, we're also not reliant upon T-bolts. And T-bolts are a little finicky. Um, if you don't get them installed just right, over time they can pop out. So we've eliminated that potential source of, of unreliability for the installer. Is there something you want to specifically pinpoint to highlight something that might be annoying about what an installer is already doing that they don't know is annoying until they don't have to do it anymore? One of the complaints that, that we hear people report, a lot of it has to do with the clamps. And the SMR clamps are fully universal, both the end and the mid. It's a single skew for any module thickness. And a lot of clamping systems out there still require you to have a specific clamp for a module thickness or a specific component you have to get depending upon the module thickness. So, you know, a crew runs the risk of they end up at a job site, they've got the wrong height clamp, and they're shut down while they're waiting for somebody to run, the dis run to the distributor and get more of them. The second thing we've done on the rooftop is our new nano mount roof attachment. You know, solar has gone through kind of a couple evolutions in how we attach to comp shingle roofs with the, the, the way back days of, of solar. I think I've heard it described as goop in a prayer, where it was just <laughs> an outfit on the roof and put a lot of sealant around it and let's hope it works. And we evolved from that into flashings, which have uh, been the dominant product for a long time. And Sunmoto, we make a number of flashings as well. The nano mount is kind of the next step forward in that it removes the flashing, but still provides a high level of, uh, of protection against water, making it through the attachment. And we do that a number of ways. We've got a, a big thick neoprene gasket on the bottom, but the real benefit of the nano mount is the speed. By removing the flashing, we make it so that the installer doesn't have to pop any shingles and slide flashings underneath. That's the really slow part. Based on the time trials that we've done with some of our installers, uh, the rafter version of the nano mount takes about a minute per attachment to attach. And the deck mount version takes about 20 seconds per attachment because you don't have to take the time to find rafters. That's uh, just super fast and super easy. 
you know, how we said this is kind of a tried and true method installers like doing just rail based and they kind of have their system a lot of the times. Um, so I guess, do you have any special message to someone who just feels like I already have my racking, you know, I don't really care about even if something is better. Appreciate you asking that question because it is something, <laughs> it's something we hear a lot. We recognize that for a solar installer, changing racking is, is, is probably the most difficult change they can make. You know, most modules and inverters are, are kind of plug and play, whereas racking has, has a lot of parts, a lot of pieces. There's a learning curve to how to do it. The ask we have of installers is to, to take a step back and, and hear us out. It, it's surprising to us the extent to which there hasn't been much innovation in racking, particularly flush mount roof racking which is kind of shocking in solar is since it's an industry that is just constantly changing and constantly and constantly evolving. And here at Sunmoto, we have tried to really push the envelope and, and save installers, save installers money in, in a variety of ways. One is, is their soft costs. We want to help them go faster. We want to help them do a tile roof in the same amount of time they can do a comp roof job. We want to help them do a ground mount in a similar amount of time that they can do a, uh, a, pit, a, a pitched roof job. And we want to take their comp shingle jobs and help them do those even faster. And then at the same time, we also want to help them save money on their costs. We're, we're not setting out to be the low cost provider. We're setting out to be the best value providers. Tile mounting is obviously an entirely different challenge. Um, and I'm wondering what is new in that category and ways that you've been able to improve because that's, uh, you know, it can be a tougher installation uh, in terms of breakage and stuff like that. It, it is, um, you know, one of the things that we find when we talk to a lot of installers that install in tile areas like Florida or the Southwest is that even in those markets where there are a lot of tile roofs, there are numerous installers that just don't want to touch tile because the, the, the conventional means of attaching to a tile roof, whether it's a tile hook or a tile replacement, are either slow or they're prone to breakage. We introduced our top tile product, which is a completely different and unique look at attaching to a tile roof. The main thing it lets you do is that you don't have to remove any tiles. Um, you know, Quite simply, you, you drill a hole through the tile and then all of the attachment then is done above that tile. The product is designed as a deck mount, so you don't have to take the time to find rafters. You just go to the, the peak of each tile, drill a hole, and then the stanchion goes in through that, and then three deck screws. And then we use a spray and foam to uh, provide the waterproofing. And then over top of that goes a, a an aluminum flashing that that can, you can bend to match the shape of the whatever the tile roof is. It's a, it's a little bit slower than a comp roof attachment, but it's about twice as fast or more than doing uh, you know, a conventional tile hook or a tile roof replacement. So that's what it offers to an installer is that they can do a tile roof at a comparable speed to how they would do a comp shingle roof. That's huge. And then considering it takes away some of the downside risks uh, associated with it, you know, it's just- Absolutely. One of the more versatile systems that you have is sun turf. Now it, I, it's primary, function is a, a ground mount for residential sites, but it does have that ability to also go above obstructions on a commercial roof, which, roof, which I think is pretty interesting. How does that split break down of uh, installers using it on a commercial roof to go over uh, obstacles that are up there versus uh, using it as a ground mount? SunTurf, as you said, it's an incredibly versatile product. Um, it is primarily, we sell it as a ground mount. Uh, the rooftop is 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 kind of a niche. If you have a roof that has got a lot of obstructions on it, whether there's a lot of mechanical equipment or piping, and you just can't get uh, a conventional ballasted system, you can't get enough modules up there with a conventional ballasted system to make the project calc out financially. With SunTurf, we can just elevate above those obstructions and get a lot more modules on the roof. But that it is kind of a niche because you know most commercial flat roofs are are pretty pretty well suited for a ballasted system. Um, as a ground mount, we are confident in saying that we feel like SunTurf is the best residential and light commercial ground mount on the market. Where it really excels there is with the speed of install, and there's a couple main ways we've achieved that. The first is with um, is with ground anchors. Historically, most residential scale ground mounts have used a post and concrete foundation. Larger scale scuff utility projects like that have generally used post pounded foundations, but those generally are not economical for the smaller residential scale installations. So in those cases, people have, have augered out a hole, 
they put a pipe in it, they put concrete in it, they wait for it to cure, and they build a ground mount around it. What we've allowed people to do is have a ground anchor that you install with a uh, skid steer with an auger driver. You screw it into the ground, and as soon as it's in the ground, you're ready to build the rest of the system. So what we're offering to people is that, generally speaking, an experienced crew can install a 20-kilowatt system in a day, uh, whereas previously they would have needed two and a half, three days to do that. So using the ground screws and some of the other innovations we have, like we provide all the pipe and it's all pre-cut. So you get a front leg, a back leg, and you get horizontal legs. So the crew's not out in the field having to measure things and cut things, making mistakes and wasting pipe. It just all goes together super, super fast. So it's 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 really a lot of it is about speed and helping their production. To me, that's really interesting, especially the size of system and the, the speed you're able to uh, achieve with that. Are, I guess, how are you seeing in terms of adoption? Like our residential installers that are, you know, kind of traditionally doing the tried and true rooftop installs, are, are they pursuing ground mounts? And is it, how much more could it add in terms of maybe diversifying their product offering revenue stream wise? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. One of the things that we have definitely seen is we, we've seen um, a, a fair number of residential installers who historically just have not bothered with ground mount. If they can't get it on the roof, they move on to the next job and, and, and try to sell on the roof. So they're, they're leaving money on the table by saying no to ground mount jobs. And they've said no, because they don't want to deal with concrete. They don't want to deal with having to schedule maybe a subcontractor to come in and do the earthwork. Uh, it just sort of interrupts their, their flow of how they work operationally. Um, but when we can make it so that they can do a ground mount in, in a, a shorter period of time, they can make money from it. So we, we have definitely seen a lot of installers who previously would have said no to ground mount, say yes to it. And then additionally, we've seen a lot of installers who have done a lot of ground mounts be incredibly excited that they can do more ground mounts uh, without adding more crews. And, and basically just, you know, uh, just to be real cut and dried, they can make more money at it. If you can go faster, you can make more money at it. Hey, well, that's a that's a great note to end on. Uh, that's yeah. what I think we're all striving for out there. Um, I guess just uh, where can we get more information on Sunmoto in general, Steve? So sunmoto.com, always a great place to start. We've got our, our online configuration tools there. We've got our downloads with all of our stamped engineering and our drawing packages and our typical details and brochures. And then also that's a great place to go to find out how to contact your, your best person from Sunmoto. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time today, Steve. Awesome. Thanks, Chris.